Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everyone. Have you ever thought about writing a book? I actually have. I have a friend who's in the same line of work. He wrote a book. You know, some of the stories and things that went on in his life uh, within his occupation. I'm thinking, you know, I, I got stories. But wouldn't even know where to begin with that. Do you just start writing and see that where that takes you? What about the the whole editing process? You hire somebody to help you with that. That's where I go with that. And I've got him right here. His company is NFB Publishing. He is a full service publisher. It takes you right from the beginning, right to the end of publishing the book, the cover art, the uh, distinct number for the Library of Congress. All of that is what he does. Mark Pogosinski is back with us. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So where do we begin with this? You have an idea for a book. You think it's a good idea. You spoke to others. They say, yeah, you know what? That that could be either sellable or just a good book. Um, where do you begin? Uh, that, that's a great question. Um, there are multiple answers depending on what type of book you're writing. Um, so we can take it. Let's, uh, let's start with the fiction. Um, a lot of the fiction writers, it's difficult to sit down and with no experience and and write a novel. I mean, think about the logistics of it, mm. the, t the time it takes. Um, and then a lot of times when we're talking with a novelist, the first time novelist is like, I wrote my story. It was six pages long and that I, I finished it. It was beginning to end. And uh, how do I turn that into a novel? So, um, for the novice, for someone who has no background in creative writing or English or anything like that, um, my advice to you for those people is to start with a short story. Start smaller. Um, mm -hmm. Look at your this, this idea. Um, a lot of us, when we do write books, they're not fully formed novels um, with subplots and 25 to 30 characters running around. They're an idea two or three characters, a simple plot line, and usually like um, a, a twist at the end. You know, like, oh, I got this great idea for an end. I got to figure out how to get there. So I, my advice for those people um, is to start with a short story, okay? Something doable, five, 10 pages long, and then see how that went, see how your process went. And if you enjoyed it and you think, wow, this is done, I love this story, Maybe you're not a novelist. Maybe you're a short story writer, hmm. which I'm a big fan of. So that's, again, for a novice, someone who's just sitting around at home. Um, I got an idea for a story. Um, whatever during my daily life, I have flights of fancy. I daydream, and I want to get it down on paper. So let's start easy. You start with a short story, and then there's multiple websites that you can send it to. Um, <clears throat> you can send it to us, and, and we will give you a review of that story. We don't have to do a novel. If you got an idea and it turns out to be uh, not as long as, you know, 100 pages, 50 pages, a novella, something like that, we'll take a look at it for you and we will give you some feedback. So that's one way to go about it. I don't know mm. if you're thinking about like that. Um, most people have day jobs, they're not professional writers. Right. So uh, it's in piecemeal. So that's one way. And we did talk about um, short stories. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last time we got together, looking at uh, some of the titles that you published, there was a, you know, a number of books that contained short stories. I never even considered that. Um, and by the way, when we first started here today, I wasn't even thinking novel. I was I was thinking a nonfiction book because you know the material. You know, it's it's there's a reason you would write a nonfiction book. Uh, but a novel, interesting. Yeah, and I'm, I, you look at the novels. I mean, you, a novel is that's world building at its finest, and that takes a lot of time, a lot of skill, and, and you, it's not easy, as we mentioned before. Um, hours on hours of writing, not even editing, not even not even publishing, is simply getting that down on paper. And having written novels myself, the it's not. You like to think that it's like building something and then there's components to it. And at the end, you have this final product with, with writing. 
And I think most artistic en endeavors, mm. the final product is not sometimes not what you start off with in mind. And you have to be flexible and be able to go there. And it, and sometimes, <clears throat> I mean, I have thrown away hundreds of pages. You know, like I got an idea for a novel. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to be famous. It's going to be world changing. Everyone's going to quote it. And then, you know, 120 pages into it, I was like, I, I can't remember where, why I started this. These characters are going nowhere. Um, I have some good moments, but there's no way I can finish this because I have no idea what's going on. So you set that to the side. You might pull parts from it for another project, but, um, you know, mm. like not to put too fine a point on it. I think I have 30 unfinished novels in various stages where you're like, you know what? It's not going the way I want, and it's mm. not going to be good, and it's not going to change the world. So we'll put it's that funny there. as as we're talking about this. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm envisioning. Well, well, could could I write a novel? Could could some of us write a novel? And I find in my mind, starting it, moving a little long, and then getting back into a corner, where, all right, now what's going to happen? How's that ca character going to? interact what about that one what about the fact checking blah, 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 blah. short story is a way to go <laughs> at least initially initially kind of get dipping your toe in the water and with the short story if you have a character that you truly enjoy you can take that character and bring it to another short story and then maybe from that point you're like all right now i can see a process here now i can see a way to get this entire thing into one book and then the novel starts growing and starts living. Um, but again, I'm a huge fan of the short story. It's less time consuming. It's less pressure on you as the writer to like, oh man, I got to pump out 250 pages for this to be a novel. A short story is a nice way to go. It doesn't have to be, it can be like one or two pages, um, especially for like fancy sci-fi writers. Um, short stories are a nice way to start dipping your toe into that creative writing process. And like you as an illustrator, <clears throat> I know a lot of uh, artists who aren't writers. And I was like, you know what? Let's do uh, a panel. Let's do some storyboarding. And that might help you um, develop your characters. Um, a lot of novelists will come to me and say, you know what? I'm having trouble with a character design. <clears throat> we like to put them in trust with, with an artist like yourself. Like, all right, can you give me some sketches? Yeah, I got a cowboy idea in mind, but he's dark, he's brooding, but I, I can't get to him. I can't figure him out. If you see an image of that, that mm. can really unlock it for somebody in terms of that creative process. Yeah, I just want to interject here as well that you could use AI describing that cowboy, you yeah. know, just to get a better visual uh, from another angle. Um, and that just brought me to uh, writing with AI. Yeah, I, I, listen, I'm not a fan. Uh, okay. Even I find there's a there's a place for it when you need to write some things, uh, even if it's website copy, to prime your engine, to start you off. But it's, it's not the end all. I mean, there's so many fluffy words and sentences and all of that, and it's not... You know, you might you might find a word. Oh, I didn't think of that word, but the rest of it you throw it away. Um, your thoughts overall? The, the AI, it's something. It's it's gonna we're gonna live with it, right? It's it's a reality. It's it's here. Um, I I don't like to use it for creative writing because then it's not mine. But then like you bring up a great question. I'm an architect, right? And I want to design a building, and I plug in my parameters to the AI program. And AI designs a building, but it was my original idea, but AI designed it. So I had the original idea. I didn't design the building. Is it mine or is it artificial? The same thing can be hold for creative writing and, and for images too. Um, we do not use AI um, for our, our cover designs, but I know people who have used it. And you, depending on the program you're using, you can get some fantastic images. But uh, it's like a, I guess, a morality question. Because you put in the parameters, is it yours? You had the basic idea, but you actually didn't do the legwork. The same thing with writing. And you can drill that down, like you said about vocabulary. You know, you type it along, you write quick, 
on, on your mouse and you open up a thesaurus and you pick a word that was provided by someone else. Is that your word? Just because you didn't have the vocabulary to begin with, should you be, you know, shorthanded? Mm -hmm. So that's okay. But I, I want to write a novel and I pipe in boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy dies in a terrible blimp accident. Go. And AI creates a 300 page novel based on those three sentences. Is it mine? I say I, I don't think it is because you did not write it. You didn't do the legwork. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh same thing. If you wanted to see what that cowboy looks like, you told AI to describe, you described what you wanted to see dark cowboy, um, you know, looks a certain way in a certain setting, but something else created it. You didn't truly create it. Call it 50%. You directed it. Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing. If somebody's directing a movie, they're not the actor. They're, telling the actor the direction to go in, the actor is bringing it on themselves. That's why they're the actor. So that's why you are the writer. Um, again, I, th I think there's a place in you know, for AI, at least to, to you know, help you a little bit in terms of a few words, but short of that, it's like it's a, not a right. Business, a business letter, maybe, um, doing a, a nice resume, <clears throat> maybe, uh, maybe there, but you, again, having a like rules about it what are the rules like when when do we say you know what that's too much ai or you have used ai well and correctly um <clears throat> should it be in schools should it be in colleges sure yeah it, um, e even what we're talking about and this is my vision i'm not and i'm not a author but let's say i'm halfway into a novel and i've got to uh, the scene where that cowboy is walking in a back alley and runs into four individuals and I've got, I'm painting the picture, but I've, I'm just not nailing the exact wording. Maybe I would throw that into AI, that scene and see what came back. I wouldn't be copying it there, but there might be one or two words that may, may be what I was thinking, but couldn't pull them out or verbalize them. And I would just grab those words. That's that's it. I would, you know, somebody who takes that copies and pastes it again, in my experience, there's a place for AI. But when it comes to writing all the fluff that comes along with it and it's just, you know, sometimes not direct and uh, or information, you know, fact checking. Yeah, maybe there's a place for it there. You know, uh, back, back in you know 1849, uh, did that cowboy have insert, you know, a uh, certain tool or whatever? Maybe that would help you there. You know, maybe there's a place for that. Like, I'm again a big fan of research when you're doing historical fiction or even nonfiction to get it correctly. Mm. Um, but that's, I think, that's human driven. That's research. You want to find out, like, again, the cowboy, use the cowboy example. What type of pistol did you use? Um, was it a Colt? What did Colt make? Yeah. And you want to be specific for that. Um, do you have to fact check AI? Are you sure that whatever AI program you use use the correct weapon? because that's important to you because that factors into your thought process. Right. That that's, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. Would you, would you be okay with AI for fact checking like that? I, yeah, I, well, is it an AI program where like Google or even Wikipedia? Um, I, we like to assume that if you asked like say chat G uh, the chat program, GPS, like right. to, yeah, yeah. A, a, pro, uh, a story or, or a scene, with a weapon that the the computer knows which weapon is correct. But I would still, as an author who's concerned about my own work, fact check that AI program to make sure that it did it correctly. And again, that's where you get into some trouble with AI. Why not just do it yourself? Why not just go find, again, you can find it online probably, or if you're old school like myself, you go to a library or your own library and look it up. And, and find out what weapon is correct because that's important. That's a historical fact for your your piece. Um, the, the question with AI is, is gonna have to be, con it's concerning because you do, we check every manuscript that we get in terms of submissions for AI content. And part of our contract at the end of the process is a statement saying, I did not use AI in the creation of this book. Huh. And for us, it's important, but um, as time goes on and, and younger writers become 
more accustomed to using it, how much are they going to use it? And and is a total AI book without merit? Um, mm. I, I don't know. I've never read a total AI book, but that's a question that has to that should be asked. And I'm not sure there is an answer. It's going to be a personal preference. Like you don't use AI, I prefer AI. Um, I think most schools check for AI and still want original content in yep. terms of assignments and stuff. Yep. But even like a video, we could make videos of this podcast with AI. And, you know, I could be Humphrey Bogart and you can be <laughs> whomever you want. And that like a face swapping tech, all that stuff is there. And question is, how can we ethically use it? to maintain our creativity without just simply asking a computer to write or create something for us. Okay. Hmm. So back to this, the, <laughs> the, the writing. <laughs> we, we just beat up AI. Uh, back to the writing process. So you know, whether it's a short story, whether you're writing a nonfiction book, you, you're moving, moving along, you've gotten to a point where yeah, making some progress feels feels pretty good. Uh, where do you go from there? You know, at what point do you, at what point do you get into the editing process? Uh, do you wait till you're done, halfway there? How does that all work? That's a personal preference for the author. <clears throat> if we get like an email, like I'm halfway done with this nonfiction piece, I think it's smooth, I think it's great, and I, I just want some feedback from a, like a professional. You send it to us. We send you back a one page report on what what we think as someone who's never been, has no idea what you're doing, has never read any of your work, a total outsider. Um, you know, we can always show it to our family. And like my mom, uh, before she passed, she thought everything I wrote was amazing. And it really wasn't. And she was a, a, a kind to say like, you're doing a good job. Oh man, this scene is, you know, it's, it's violent, but you re it's really, really good. So and it, it, yeah, take that with a grain of salt, but um, you want a professional's opinion, especially if your end goal is to publish, because you don't want to create something um, that is not professional looking, that has a lot of errors in it. And, and it could be simple as a misplaced period, especially dialogue form and back to fiction. A lot of people have trouble with a, a simple thing like that. So that's where we're there to help. In terms of nonfiction, I would make sure that I am not copying, that my citations are correct, that when I cite something that it is in the proper format. And again, we can help with that too. A lot of writers are, are pretty far removed from college and they forgot their MLA, how to cite something and do footnotes and all that stuff. And that's where we can help. But at any time that you want feedback, you should try to get it. You don't have to write, like, write this entire beautiful book and then realize it basically exists already. And that's something we can help you with too. Um, but feedback is incredibly important and you should try to get it from someone in the publishing industry who has no idea who you are and is new to your work. Okay. Our moms are all great and I'm not saying they are fantastic, but sometimes they are, they are too nice and we need a little mm -hmm. <laughs> criticism to our work. Well, how does somebody engage your company, uh, like you said, you, you, you'll send it to us and then we'll take a look at it. Um, does that start in the beginning? You know, let's say Steve wants to write a uh, nonfiction book about his decades in broadcasting. You know, lots of crazy things have gone on. Um, people I've met, things, whatever. Um, would I start with engaging you and say, hey, Mark, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Um, retain you at that point so that down the road if i have questions how does that work so for for that we would expect you to have some sort of writing done already like this is a sample of what i like like traditionally uh back in the day it was three sample chapters um which we can okay. still do um but for us um one of my biggest concerns when i started my own company i had gone through the process myself and everything was up front you know like i need a thousand dollars and fifteen hundred and five thousand whatever we right. don't do that. we do not ask for anything up front ever um because it, it's so off-putting and i always i always hated it and any company we work with we work with a couple of different pr companies they must adhere to our idea too there's nothing ever up front we don't want any upfront cost for that wow. you might, an editor might want something up front 
before they look at it. So for your example, we expect some sample chapters. You're like, oh man, this is great. This is fantastic. Um, continue writing. Here's a, a, a report on the, your three sample chapters. You are missing hmm. here, here, and here. Um, you need to go do a grammar check, but the, the bones of it are fantastic. And then we would ask, then hopefully you're inspired to finish your book. That That's fantastic. Um, when you say PR company, and I know a number of people in that field, none of them will take anything without a retainer. And usually, yeah. you know, for PR companies, it's a sizable retainer. Like yeah. you can minimum 2,500 standard yeah. fee is truth be told, this is it, you know, is 5k. And there's no guarantee that no. they're going to get you this or get you that. That's just so very refreshing, Mark, to hear that that's how you operate. Um, and especially for, for those of us who aren't writers have, you know, a little, a little fire inside to to create a story, or in the case of of many that you've worked with, um, writing a book or novel to help them heal, you know, from a from a, uh, a traumatic situation, and they want to share it with others to help them as well. Uh, I like the, uh, the the fire metaphor, and we have to nurture that fire. Okay, that that little spark in us that was like I am creative. I work in a job that I, I like, but I don't love. And I, I have this creative outlet. And that's, I think that's the point of us and, and the wow. people we're trying to help with is, is that fire has to be nurtured, especially in this day and age, um, because I think it's going out a little bit. And wow. with everything that's going on, you have to have that creative outlet because it's imperative. It's essential for us as humans. As, And thank you for saying that. With what you just said, where there's no retainers up for anything like that, right, we'll take a look at it and then go from there. You, in my mind, went from a business person, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is you're helping that. people. Not at all. But in my mind, it went from that to a friend wanting to help you along the way, and then you're compensated for that help. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the vibe I got where it's like, you know, what would I, I, I have a friend, Mark. Yeah. He, he's in a publishing company. Uh, I'm going to write some stuff and then I'm going to send it to him, see what he thinks. And then he'll tweak it a little bit. And then we're going to go from there. I don't know if I can write. He's going to tell me. Um, that's kind of what it feels like. And very refreshing. Ideally, that's what publishing should be. And that's why we started this particular company. Um, again, that, that little spark is so essential. It's, it's so important to mm. nurture even in like later in life because we have uh, like older authors i never thought i'd write a book before um it's it again i, I don't know if people can live without it mm. so you want to yeah. help people nurture that little spark very cool very cool and in my mind it's like i would i would love to write a book why not time <laughs> gotta make the time i got so many other things i have to write like websites and things like that uh but i look at a colleague who has retired he's older than me uh, he wrote a book. I started reading a little bit of it. Um, yeah, interesting stories. I got him too, you know, and same line of work. You know, he's done radio for, for decades. I have as well. Uh, you see a lot, you run into a lot. <laughs> I think it might be interesting. Um, and it's funny, like when you start thinking of those things, even if you are a, a co I'm no cosmetic surgeons that have written books uh, to help people understand the process and help help them understand, even if they're considering cosmetic surgery, what goes on behind it and what they should be thinking. Um, they've got stories to tell too. I, we all have a story. And, I, and oh. that, we can't discount that. And there's a creative element to that too and how you put sure, it sure. together, even in the plastic surgeon. There's something there that they want to express to other people. And and yeah. you never know how many people you're going to help right. by doing this. And And you're also helping yourself in terms of your credibility. You know, it's fantastic. Hey, I wrote a book. You know, yeah, like I, I'm published. Um, how do we do this? The starting point, Mark, how do we connect with you? Just go to nfbpublishing.com. You'll see all our titles listed on the main page. And then if it's something you're interested in, there is a uh, titles and sales page. There's a media page. And then there's a submissions page. And the submissions page has a small form. Just fill that out. And that starts the process. If like yourself, I just got 
I got an idea for a book. I got some sample chapters. There's an email address. You email me, you send me the stuff, and we'll get you a one-page written report. Uh, again, a professional opinion of your writing and, and see, we, see where we can go. Very exciting. Uh, I went from uh, having a match and some coal to now a little bit of fire burning. <laughs> that is that is great yeah great for uh, friday you're ahead yes you're great at uh, what you do and even just looking at all the titles that 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 says it right there the diversity um and your passion too uh shines through with with all of that thank you uh, for everything today mark really appreciate it i appreciate you thank you for having me thank you we'll be right back are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.